Hi, this is Jonaki Ray, tuning in from New Delhi, India, uh, on the second day of the Seren Poetry Festival. Um, I am uh, recording this at almost 9.30 India Standard Time. Um, I managed to watch uh, three sessions. The first one was uh, the Magma Solitude issue launch. Uh, that has been co-edited by Isabel Bafi, Ilya Kaminsky, and Lisa Kelly. Uh, they showcase the work of several poets on the themes of uh, solitude from the perspective of migration, history, trauma, and memories. Um, my uh, me highlights from this session are Alice Hiller's uh, essay that, uh, and a short poem called Chalk that she read out. Um, and it talked about memories and how poetry can be very powerful in uh, dealing with that. That brings me to the second session that I bought, uh, that I watched, uh, which was uh, called Poetry and Empowerment. Um, this was moderated by Zoe Prigley, who um, discussed questions like, uh, does poetry empower? What is meant by power? Which poets influenced? And the poets in this discussion were Kim Moore, Eric Nagale Charles, Hannah Hodgson, and Golnoosh Noor Pana. They uh, each read a poem from their collection. And uh, the highlight for me was Kim's uh, mentioning how poetry makes her feel transformed. And for her, that is a very uh, empowering feeling. Uh, she read. Uh, two poems, poem number seven and poem number 48 from one of my favorite poetry collections, All the Men I Never Married. Hannah read from her uh, collection, 163 Days, that is about her time spent in palliative care. And she mentioned how for her, uh, she came into poetry through trauma and that has been very empowering. Um, Hannah also presented from her book in the last session that I attended, which was uh, Seren Presence New Poetry. Um, the other two poets in this session were Angela Graham, who read out from her collaborative volume, um, Sanctuary. Um, the volume has work from five poets, and she read out poems that describe the meaning of the word sanctuary from the different poet's perspective. My favorite here was the poem Consider, and there's a line here which I found very beautiful. I was a refugee, now I'm here. And I felt that it really addresses so many of the issues that are going around in this war-torn times. The last poet in this session was Ben Wilkinson, who read from his uh, collection, Same Difference. Uh, a highlight for me was when he mentioned that his favorite novel is The Sense of an Ending by Julian Barnes, uh, because it talks about how memory changes depending on who is remembering. And all of us adapt our memories from our perspective. And it's one of my favorite novels as well. Um, and I feel that uh, at the end of today's session, I'm left with the huge sense of empowerment because when I listen to poets from all over the world, uh, it definitely uh, expands my horizons my, and inspires me and tells me so much about what's happening around the world. And I definitely think that um, poetry is so powerful because uh, it stays behind, it leaves these memories behind, uh, even when all of us are gone. Um, so on that note, I'm going to read a Bengali poem. Uh, it's by a poet called Mallika Sen Gupta. It's called Khonar Shah's uh, Gaan. Uh, so I'll read the Bengali version first. Modha Juger Bongo Bhumite Ak Chilo Me Tar Nam Khona Pratom Mohila Kobi Banglar Tar Jeep Kete Chilo Panch jana. Jeep kete neva khonar bachon, shagore, pahare, akashe, chori porlo. The translation by me is In the Middle Ages, in the land of Bengal, there was a woman called Khona. 
She was the first woman poet and her tongue was severed by the people around her. Her severed tongueless voice though spread around and stayed behind amongst the seas, the mountains, the skies and still remain with us. On that note, I'm signing off from New Delhi. Do follow us on the Just Another Poet YouTube channel. Bye for now. Bye. It's your first day here, Haman. Yes, yes. How's it been? It's been really good, really inspiring. I, I attended quite a lot of, uh, you know, events and uh, sessions. And uh, um, especially the last one that I just uh, attended was about uh, mindfulness and uh, yoga and, you know, um, also how uh, it could be, uh, it could converge with writing, writing practices, which was very interesting in a lot of ways. And uh, it reminded me of, uh, um, I used to practice yoga quite uh, regularly uh, when I was young and I haven't done that in 20 years, but, you know, it, it inspired me, it sort of motivated me to go back to that. So I'm really pleased about that. To go back to it with a, a new way of looking at it? Yes, yes, possibly, possibly, yes. Going, yeah. Well, I've never done yoga, but I might start. All right, okay. <laughs> we did get actually yoga mats a couple of Christmases ago. All and right. we are still rolled up in our cupboard <laughs> right. in our bedroom. So you, but, you've uh, got the equipment. Yes, I just need to use it. Today you've had the inspiration. I have, and I can go forward now and then use that and connect my mind to my body, to the earth, and put it into my writing. There you go. Yes. That's an interesting exercise, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the link between yoga, meditation and writing? Could you see what that link was? I can now. Before, I didn't understand it, but having heard the panel discussing it, I thought it was really interesting. Yeah, oh, yeah. links to nature. And, yeah. yeah, one thing I really uh, liked was about how uh, it said, you know, um, quietening, you know, silencing the chitter chatter, mm. whether it's in your mind, you know, or uh, and focusing on uh, on the presence, on your presence. Uh, and also, you know, you could apply that to writing as well, obviously, because it's a very similar sort of practice. Mm. So, yeah, I found that very interesting. I, I, I found it fascinating to realize that really this whole emphasis that we kind of brought up with, I suppose, that you need to empty your mind is actually not mm. possible. That's right, yeah. It's concentrating about what's in your mind. Yes. Thank I found that really, it really, literally, yeah. Copernican mm. <laughs> revolution. Right. Uh, because it, you're always trying to empty your mind, empty your mind. I think, well, you can't. No, no, no. when it's going like this all the time. Exactly. Although, with all those, no. as, as, as the chair said, that with all the happy monkeys swinging around yeah. inside, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your brain is not made like, uh, like, no. Uh, like no, that. No, no, yeah. no, no. That was, and then the, 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 what, the, the, the other comment about. Um, uh, that if, 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 you, if, you, if you're struggling with your writing, if your writing is broken, then you're probably you're struggling with your, your body. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because your body's holding up things that might be blocking. I think I never thought of that before. No. Now I, I need to go away and process that. And, and how do you say right, your body's broken in life? Also, yeah, also, dear, as a scriveni, the manyaun, also, dear, scriveni, where di tori, and are possible with the word a carf with mm. that the writing isn't right because the body isn't right. Mm. You were going to add to that. I, I was in a Writing for Wellbeing workshop earlier and we were given a poem called Table and the poet was emptying the, their mind or abstract um, and physically with objects onto the table, so getting rid of everything that was weighing them down and trying to find a way to you know, breathe, I think. So, I mean, I can, you yeah. see the connection there. And in doing that, you can see each individual object and therefore you can order the objects mm. instead of them being a jumble. Mm. Yes, yes, you can. And that's the bit about not being able, not empty in your mind, but ordering what's in your mind. Mm. Making sense of yourself and yes. of the world. Yeah. 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 Is there any Farsi uh, connection? Is, is, you know, how would you express that in kind of Farsi? Um. I can say that in Urdu now. Okay, well, let's take it. Agar jism, agar jism shikasta hai, agar jism shikasta hai, to khayal bhi shikasta honge. 
اس لیے خیالوں کو مجتمع کرنا فکر کو مجتمع کر کر اسے جو ہے لکھنا یہ کاغذ پر ڈالنا کرتاس پر ڈالنا یہ اہم چیز ہے تو یہ جو ہے ہم نے اس سے ورک شاپ وغیرہ جو ہیں آج جو ہوئی ہیں ان سے سیکھا